And how you doing, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages? Welcome in to a special pop-up gathering of the Concurpas. The Wild Side Live is coming at you from the east side of Music City, USA. I am your host, Eric Clark, saying thank you for taking time out of your Monday afternoon, evening, morning to hang out with us here in Music City, USA. Thank you to everybody who's moderating today. Ridge, Rich, Marika. I think I saw Chris up there as well. Rich is in the um, central time zone here in the U.S. with me. So it's right at 11 o'clock. Today is a special day because one of our other moderators, Little Raven, has sent me a box of goodies. So today we are going to, once again, I can't stay away from Little Raven's box. So today we are back getting knuckle deep into Little Raven's box. And something else, too, before I get started. Hello to everybody. Gwen, Rodri, uh, who else we got going on? Yanni is here. So thank you to everybody. Um, For those of you just joining, again, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Hit the like button. You know the drill. I'm not expecting a ton of people today, so it's just a little bit of a pop-up. I even screwed up the first one. (laughs) So um, just a lot of stuff was going on. I got caught up in a, in a minute work song. So I was like, oh my God, I got like 30 seconds to go. So it is it is a pop-up. I'm not expecting much. I'm just expecting the goodness that is Little Raven's Box. But when I went to the P.O. Box, which is also down in, hey, Kitty of the Wilds, which is down in the description, everything, every way to get a hold of me is down in the description. When I went to the P.O. Box today to get Little Raven's Box, Somebody sent me, uh, I believe it is, I want to make sure I get this correct, a gift for me. I always look over here. I don't know why. I'll get used to it. Uh, Hey, Eric, here's some merch to decorate your shelf from BM for Life. And they sent me the new copy of Bandmaid's CD, New Beginning. I believe this is the, the new one. So we'll have to check that out. And that'll go up on the Shelf of Fame. This little dude right here, that little dude right there, 22 years old. Fuck, man. Time does have a way of getting away from you. So, yes, if you have something for the shelves of honor, I have Rich's granddaughter's finger painting up there, his sign, pictures, autographs, um, autographed books, hats, things like that. So if you want to send me some swag from your area or your favorite band, or if you're in a band and you want me to put your swag up here on the shelves of honor, the P.O. box is down in the description. So I'm allowed to open this, right? Like, that's... Okay. So, yeah, the new bandmade CD, New Beginning. So, thank you very much, BM for Life. Much appreciated, my man. Or my lady. Whichever. I don't know. I'll get rid of those. Okay. Ah, super cool. Eh, interesting. Okay. Dang it, Bobby. Okay, so thank you very much, BM for Life, for the new Bandmade CD. Appreciate it. Masha, hello. Thank you. Uh, Again, um, this is a pop-up, so I understand everybody's kind of getting to it, you know, suddenly. But I don't like to do the – I've I've done the recording videos where I unbox things in in just a regular standalone video. I think it's a little more fun to do it. It's more fun to do it with you. (laughs) So let's just jump right in to Little Raven's box. Little Raven, thank you, first and foremost. I don't care what's in the box. Thank you very much for just thinking of me and putting this together, going through the trouble of packing it up, buying it, organizing it, packing it up, bringing it with you, sending it from Florida, where I'll be going in in a few weeks. 
so thank you. Uh, much appreciated. Had I known, uh, had my family scheduled my dad's memorial while you were down there, I would have just met up with you and picked it up there. But I'm still waiting to be told when my father's funeral is. It's been forever. But my, my stepmom is still going through her recovery from her stroke. So I, I'm just kind of, we're in like a limbo right now waiting to figure out when to go down to Florida. So first and foremost, thank you, Little Raven for the, just thinking of me and, and putting the kindness and the care into these packages. As someone who served downrange and has been away from home, I, I cannot express to you what this triggers in me. I'm getting a, a care package. It, it's, it's, why, <laughs> it's why countries get invaded, man. You send me some shit and I'll go anywhere. <laughs> It's like, all right, man, I got my got my cookies and my Q-tips. Let's go. So thank you, Raven. Let's go ahead and and I, I would like to commend you on your packaging, not just your package, but I would like to commend you um, on your packaging. This is definitely not getting messed with. Am I the only one? OK, I have this fear. I have not a fear, but a. Uh, Maybe it is a fear, maybe a paranoia. I, I don't know what you would call it, like, psychologically. But I have this fear that as much as I trust people, I think everybody at the post office is just looking for that one package, right? Like, I think every... I know, man, I shouldn't... I know there's just... There's fine people on both sides. <laughs> I get it, man, I get it. I don't want to shit on anybody's, you know, gig, but... There is a part of me that, you know, honestly believes. Like when I was a kid, our neighborhood was so bad when we were kids that we didn't get, we didn't get traditional birthday cards. We would get packages. So my relatives in Ohio would put together all the birthday cards for somebody and they would put it in a manila envelope and they would try to make it look as governmental as possible. Because in my neighborhood... Everyone knows what a Christmas card and a birthday card looks like. And they see one of those sitting in your mailbox, it's going to get taken. I know there's only a dollar in there from grandma, but to a junkie or a wino, that's a dollar. It's like we never, um, if you bought, that's why my dad would buy floor models. My dad would buy floor models because we didn't want to put the box of something we bought out, on the gar out in the garbage. Because then we would be telling everybody, hey, we just got this new stuff. Sorry. Sorry, let me see if I can minimize the the squeaky shrieky. And I'm over here babbling. I just stabbed myself. Sorry. I have good microphones, so this is probably really loud. Okay. All right. Here we go. So this is a plastic bag that I'm thinking is just being used to cover. Um, just to cover. Okay, I did stab myself. Okay, so here we go. What's in the box, Eric? What's in the box? That may be my thumbnail now for all of my unboxing videos. I just thought of it this morning. Like, I don't even know if I'm going to get in trouble for it. But the first thing I thought was, what's in the box, Eric? What's in the box? Okay, I'm going to need my glasses for this, I think. Here, Charlie, mess with that. Okay, here they are. Okay. Magnus, damn, I don't have time to see this sitting in a bar is going to see. Okay. Well, have fun at your match, my man. Okay, so this. I have a feeling these are Juden Kokens. I have a. F I got a feeling. Ooh, Stroop Wobbles! Stroop waffle bitches. Nice. These are syrup waffles. They're stroop waffles. We know what they are. These are stroop waffles. Nice. Put them over a little cup of coffee. Warm up the innards. I'm southern. I use the word innards. That's how we describe things. Nice. More stroop waffles. I texted a buddy of mine who who buys these now. I got him addicted to stroop waffles and Udenkoken. 
So he actually buys them. He goes online and buys them. And he, every time he sends me, man, I just bought another, you know, 200, <laughs> 200 troop rifles. And it's like, bro, you, you got to stop doing that. And at least stop blaming me. You know, at least stop blaming me. All right, what else we got here? Okay. Poffertige. Poffertige. I don't know what those are. They're heavy, though. Like, this this feels heavy enough to, like, be a murder weapon in a lot. No, like a, like a midsummer murder. Like, they were killed with a box of Puffertees. All right? That's what the... These things are heavy. So this is the mix. Okay, so this is the mix that I use um, to make them. Okay, good to know. I'll need to translate these instructions, but I think I can figure it out. Ten minutes in the oven, not bad. So these are good? These are good, huh? All right. The same we have pre-packaged. Okay. These I have to make. No worries. I, I, my, my son and I love baking, so we're definitely going to do that. And then you do the powdered. Is, is, is it good to do the powdered sugar? Because I see the little sifter here on the front, so it strikes me as though you sprinkle them with, oh, it looks like butter. So it looks like butter and powdered sugar. Oh, I want to commit a hate crime on these. Yeah. And my son was just talking about, have a good one, Magnus. Uh, my son was just talking about beignets and how he had just discovered flaky sugar dusted pastry. I'm like, okay, all right. You like the beignets? I can handle that. All right, we got some more. Uh, ooh, yay, the gorilla faces. Yay. These are some of my favorite. I do like these. They have a really good um, black licorice, uh, almost banana flavor to them. I like them. Banana. Bananas in pajamas. Do you guys have that show? Bananas in pajamas? Bananas in pajamas? Or as we like to call it? Bananas in pajamas. Yeah, these will get that up quick. Whoa! 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 Slow your southern roll there, Eric. These will get et up quick. Didn't mean to say that. But when faced with tasty candies... From the Netherlands. Sorry. I, I lose myself, as Eminem would say. Uh, yeah, just shoot me, a, um, just hit me, a, just DM me on Discord with a link to a pan. If they have them on Amazon, I'll grab one. Oh. Oh. Dude, get out of here. Now, these are Lenticoken. Lenticokin. Lenticokin. Are these the, um, let me shake those out there. Oh, look at these. There's two different kinds here. Okay. Oh, oh, come on, man. Come on, dude. Sorry. Okay. Okay, so these are Lenticokin. It just smells like a bag of butter. Just smells like a bag of motherfunkin' butter. Charlie, get out. Charlie. Charlie, get away from the cords, dude. Oh my God. I got to get these cats and their nuts cut. They're starting to get crazy. Oh, my God. Hmm. Shut up. Everybody shut the fuck up. Oh, my God. Hmm. God damn. How is it my mouth is watering after I eat it? 
Holy shit. How does that happen? Mm. Sorry. You fuckers been holding out on me, ma'am. This cookie will make me hate America. Hmm. It'll make me hate America. Why don't we have these, man? We have racism, oppression, DEI, a senile president, but I can't get a fucking spring cookie. God, this place sucks. Oh, this place sucks. But of course, in the Netherlands, you guys got a bunch of immigrants just stabbing motherfuckers over there. So I'll take broken cookies and a senile president. Thank you. Okay, so these, oh, uh, uh, uh. Ooh, I just saw what was in the bottom there. <laughs> uh. Did I try that spray? Yes, I did. Uh, yeah, I did, Yanni. And it works. Uh, they haven't been chewing through anything, but they still like to explore and fuck around, and they're spraying. So uh, it's, they're spraying. I can smell it. So I got to steam clean and get their nuts cut and all kinds of craziness okay wow these are heavy holy shit dude these things weigh like eight fucking pounds okay the okay so um right sit straight so i drool over both sides i mm, hold on hold on Mm. I almost said something. I almost said something. Shut your face. Okay, so... Hang with me here for just a second. Please read between the lines when I say this. Cat! Cat, stop! <sighs> They're getting out of hand. Um, okay. I don't know about anybody else. I'm just speaking about myself. If it's good, if it's good... When I'm done with it being good, I mean good, don't talk to me, touch me, look at me, be anywhere around me for just a couple minutes. That's these cookies. Oh, man. These are sex noise cookies, man. These are sex noise cookies. Like you can make it, you can make the, you can over double porn just eating these cookies. You could provide the Foley for pornography just eating these cookies. Like, mmm, 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 yeah, mmm, yeah, get in there, good, yeah. Mm, that's good. That's good and sweet. Mm, that tastes great. Yeah. See? Oh, you just showed up? <laughs> oh, my God. He's up on the counter. Wow. Wow. That's different. That's that's a different um, explosion of flavor. Good name for a band, Sex Noise. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Easter and Christmas, the only time you get these? Yeah, man. It's like the only time I've had sex. Don't send me Karelian pasties. I don't know, man. These are 
Fucking good. I I don't even know, like, like I don't know if I can share these. Hmm. These might go on my gun safe. Hmm. As Rage Against the Machine said, man, I will protect it with fire. Wow, I could I could literally sit here for the rest of this fucking live stream and a glass of milk and just eat these cookies. Holy shit. Holy shit. Lucky, too, because we just finished off a birthday cake. So we finished off our birthday cake, and now we got some chocolate-covered Jew cookies. So I do want to say this, though. These cookies remind me of there was a Girl Scout cookie. And I can't remember the name of them. And this, this can't be like a Mandela effect. I know they existed. I have bought them when I was a Girl Scout camp counselor, ropes course director. They were there in the pantry. I know they existed. They were rectangular shortbread cookies with chocolate frosting on the bottom. And they don't, they don't sell them anymore doesn't matter now i have these so fine yeah these are yeah these are gonna stay close to daddy wow i didn't mean to say it like that that sounded really weird really creepy hold on holy shit oh, i think i just ruined it i think the only thing to wash down that those cookies is milk vitamin d whole Back the cow up, hand me the teat milk. Just pure. Man, that is good shit. Okay, so I got another box of the mix. Cool, 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 cool. Ooh, don't want it to fall out. I'll make sure I put these. I'll make sure I put these in proper storage. Proper storage, proper storage. You did it. And last but not least. In Little Raven's sweet, tasty box, she put a big old box of crack. It's a box of crack is what it is. It's a big box of red crack. It's heroin. I don't mean heroin. No, 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 no. That's good stuff. I'm talking about the old hood black guy heroin. Good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you that, man. You're like you're like a grandma in this. Like, hey, I really like that thing. Here's 70 pounds of it. <laughs> That's fucking brilliant. So one of the favorite treats that Little Raven sent was this red rope licorice. Now, I love those gorilla head gummies. Um, I think that's what you guys call them. I love them. They're great. But, dude, that red rope licorice, it's, it's, it's crack. It's, it, okay, here's how bad it is. It's so bad, the last time I got some, she sent me three bags of them. Three bags of this red rope licorice. Within two days, within two days, I was down to one rope, just one rope, and I, it was sitting in the bag because I put them in Ziplocs when I open them, keep them fresh, and I sat and looked at that piece of licorice like it was the last line of cocaine, and you're like, I have no money in the account, so I'm going to wait until I will murder somebody for that before I eat it. Like that's how long I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait, and and it's and and it's and it's a finality to the to eating it too, right? There was a there was a. It was almost, it was almost a eulogy, before eating this one final piece of red rope licorice, because it tastes so natural. The, if if you take Twizzlers or um, the 
uh, red vines, they still have a a plasticky, um, uh, a plasticky, unnatural texture and flavor to them. But this red rope licorice from the Netherlands is like, yo, man, yo, that's a different level. That's a it. It you can taste natural flavors in it. So, as Raven said in the um, chat, she went to the wholesaler. She went to Costco this time. Hey, Tria, <laughs> coming in. You're coming in on a little Raven's box here. I heard it when I said it. So finally, from the depths of Little Raven's sweet box, we pull the Red Rope Licorice. It is, what's the weight on this? 200, 250 ropes. That's not going to make it. <laughs> that's, that's not going to make it, man. It's just, it's just not, it's, it is so good. This stuff is so good. It's so good. Get out. You are keeping me from things. Go away. Oh. Mm. oh. Okay. 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 Get him. Give me. Come here, you. Oh, so I could just like, I'm going to cut a hole in it and just like sit like this. And this is what my life will be like. This is a kilogram. I'm going to eat a kilo of red rope licorice. And I have no regrets. And I hope that it stays in there. So when I die, and the mortician opens me up, he'll know what killed me. This shit's worth the diabetes, dude. This is totally worth losing a foot. This is totally worth losing a foot over. Like, I'll give you my foot right now for another kilo of this. Mmm. Again, how have you guys not been invaded for this shit? Give me all your red rope licorice, please. And now we dance. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to slurp it through a hole in Raven's box. Look, man. We're already past that point now, aren't we? Have we not already crossed the fucking Rubicon with this shit? Dude, a kilo. This is so sweet. I'm trying not to, trying not to let the saliva run out of my mouth. Look, you can have fun with it. You can tie knots, right? The rabbit comes out of the hole, goes down the tree, goes around the tree, comes back up through the hole. And you got a bowling knot, some shit like that. Hmm. I can hang my cat with one of those. God, this is so good. This is so good. And what's cool is it doesn't have... Thank you, Gwen. Thank you. And I think they were called like chess men or something. <laughs> yeah, kitty, it's saucy. Uh, what I like about it, you braid them, okay. What I like about it is it's a fruity flavor, but you don't know what fruit it is. It doesn't taste like man-made fruit. There's a natural fruit flavor in it, but you can't tell. It's like, okay, it's a little cherry. It's a little citrusy. There's a um, melony. I dated a girl named Melanie, and that's, I don't want to talk about it. Um, but yeah, these are really good, dude. These are really good. Talk amongst yourself. Mm -hmm. Dude. Between these and those cookies. Hey, Sip. 
God, look at it all. Eat me. And it's not saying it in a way to tell me off. Like, hey, eat me. Almost said something. <laughs> Almost said it. Later tonight, I'm going to go down on Little Raven's box. There you go. There is your ringtone. Oh, God, that's so good. I can just put it in the cheek and just let it sit in there. Mmm. And every couple of seconds, it just pow. Hey, Rich, what was the name of that gum that had the goo in the middle of it? Was it Freshen Up? Was that, was that the gum that had the liquid center that exploded in your mouth? That nutted in your mouth? The gum that comes. Sorry, sorry. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. Hey, Triop. Our thoughts are with you today. You need anything, you let us know. Enjoying the red licorice is an understatement. Do we need an R rating for the live stream? Do I need to get a room? I don't know, man. That was, uh, yes, freshen up gum. Yeah, that was freshen up gum. <clears throat> Raven, Mo, I, I, again, it's the little things. You know, I am an, I am a, I am a basic man. You just paved the highway to my heart with cookies and licorice. That's, I am, I, I'm a food guy. I, I enjoy good food. And that was good. They're going to be even better when I, when I get the milk going. So thank you very much, Little Raven, for that treat that unexpected lovely wonderful i'm gonna go daffy duck mine 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 on it i'm i'm serious i i don't even know if i'm gonna share those stroop waffles that guy can get his own like i want to have mine shortbread was girl scout cookies pepperidge farms is the co oh, okay gotcha thank you rich gotcha yeah i don't know that's why uh i get them confused it's paul rogers roger waters of cookies <laughs> so yes Mm. Like I said, that will, um, that'll, that'll get, that'll like, you hand me a pack of those cookies. It's like, okay, whose leg do you want broken? And I'll break their leg just standing there eating a cookie the whole time. Hey, sorry, dude, this, this is happening. It's, it's going to happen. So here's a cookie. <laughs> I'll give you a cookie, but I got to break your leg, dude. She gave me the cookies. My bad, but it's happening. This is me breaking your leg for these cookies is like sex with Kobe Bryant. No matter how hard you resist, it's going to happen. So just know that. Yeah, Stroop Waffles. I got a can of them. You're a little late there, Sip. Sorry. It was a pop-up stream today. So, uh, yeah, she got me the can of Stroop Waffles. And the cool thing is, Little Raven, whether she knows it or not, we already know what's going in this can once I eat all the cookies, right? <laughs> like, like we all know what's going in this can, right? Like, we all know what this is going to become, <laughs> okay? <laughs> like, I think we all know what's happening here. I think we all know what's happening with this. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I, I, that's like, again... Trefoils? No, the trefoils are the straight butter cookies. I got a box of those over there. Uh, the trefoils are the butter cookies with the Girl Scout logo on them. These were rectangle cookies with chocolate bottoms. Because everything I'm saying now sounds sexual. But yeah, this this is definitely going to be my new... Um, yeah, this is definitely going to be my new uh, container, if you will. This will replace my uh, Crown Royal bag. I'm kidding. I haven't used a Crown Royal bag 
God, probably since my 20s. And I don't think I stopped using, like, I think I just felt they were played out. I think they were just played out. Like, I, I'll find something better to keep my shit in. But, yeah, that was, uh, that, that's going to be good. And I will go, um, shoot me, if you want, shoot me a link um, or in a DM about the pan. Or I'll just go on Amazon and type in the words <laughs> and say pan. See if I can get something on Amazon. I think I can. It'll be it'll be good stuff. Get the powdered sugar out. My son and I can make up some uh, some little Dutch treats. I sent that. So when I sent my text to my buddy, I was like, "Hey, I got another box of Dutch treats." And of course, he was like, "I don't smoke cigars." I'm like, "Oh my god." I'm like, "Neither do I, dude." You know that, so you know what this is by process of elimination. Okay, I got a box of Dutch treats. What do you think it is? What was the last time I sent you a text? I don't understand this. Are people losing their um, short-term memory on things? Or are people just not paying attention? Are phones doing that to us? Maybe. So, yeah, thank you very much, Raven. That's uh, And I've got, I still have your bicycle up here. So, yes, Raven is also on the shelves of honor with the Amsterdam bicycle keychain. So I've got that, the national symbol of the Netherlands. So there you go. Got that with my Rick and Morty and my M. Poo pick and my Marco book. So, yeah, if you have anything for the shelves of honor, all you got to do is hit that P.O. box down in the description and you can send it to the P.O. box and I will put it up there. Got the new Bandmade CD as well. Thank you, Bandmade for Life. Much appreciated. Um, yeah, it does. Thank you. Okay, send me a link. All right, cool. Easy to make, yeah. I'm again, I'm not I'm a I'm a I'm a kitchen guy. So it's as long as I don't have to like uh there's some things I can't do. There's some things I can't do in the kitchen. I'm not good at. I haven't been schooled on, but for basic kitchen operations, this is I was just talking with a buddy. I, I helped a friend of mine last week uh do some catering. Easy job, man. Just taking some some crab cakes out and, you know. Oh, uh, no tulips. Uh, no, I have. So you guys know, I should take a picture of them. There's photos of them on my Instagram. When my wife was in high school, she was in the Netherlands. She took a Europe trip to Netherlands and brought back tulip bulbs. And her grandfather planted them. So because she was in college or high school or whatever, um, I think she was in get just just out of high school going into college. So she didn't have a place of her own. So he planted them at his place. Well, we live there. So we I live in the home and out back in the back corner of the house by the rose bush every year. This big batch of red tulips blooms. Um, and that's Kelly's Netherland Dutch. They're Dutch legitimate from the Netherlands tulips. Uh, we have them in the backyard. So if you want to send me more, if you're allowed, like I don't know if you're allowed anymore. Like I don't know what the laws are with tulip bulbs out of the Netherlands now. Um, so I know you used to be able to get them, but I don't know if you can ship them around anymore. No hashish. No, I'm not a hash guy, man. I've never liked it. I've never liked it. I'm a pretty simple... Um, partier i've tried things i've tried all kinds of stuff but i've always come back to just uh you know not even a drinker all right i just like a nice little buzz mellow out you know my brain's already going at a thousand miles an hour so i'd like to just sometimes settle it down a little bit so that's how i do it but uh Herring with onions. Oh, God, no. Raw herring is the best. What, for bait? Is that what you're saying? I get that, though. I get that. There's that um, strum, whatever it is, the salted fish, the salted raw fish that you guys 
make the Strom something. I can't remember the name of it, but it's in one of my games. You can make it. And someone else, um, someone from Finland says, needs to gather that Finn power and send me some Sisu items. Somebody said on Discord that you guys need to put some Sisu items on my shelves of honor from Finland. Is that a thing? Are there, like, Sisu items? Is I thought it was just a movie that I need to watch. I didn't, like, is Sisu something other than a movie in Finland? Is it? Sir Stroming. Yes, that's it. That's it. Thank you, Marika. Marika. Thank you, Marika. See you on Discord later. Uh, raw beef and onions for me all day, any day. Ooh, that's tartar. That's a uh, tartar. Now my stomach's, my stomach wants more cookies. <laughs> so, so give me more cookies. I was going to do videos today, but I'll do that tomorrow. I've got a couple of um, old requests that I need to get knocked out. A couple of suggestions that I need to get banged out. Let me go up here to the top. These things are just stacking up. I'm sorry, guys. I, I, I try to... I try to get through them as quickly and as expeditiously as possible, but they, they just really stack up. Um, thank you, Chris. Have a good rest of the day. Kitty of the Wild says, Sisu candy. What is Sisu candy? Um, I, don't, I don't know what Sisu... That would be weird. Uh, yeah, one of the there's a a band called Palais Royale. Um, great band, saw them live last year. I don't know where they're from. Palais P A L A Y E Royale is the name of the band, and there's uh these guys doing. It's A V is requested Raskasta. Jaula, Jalu, Jalua from 2023. It's an adaptation of a silent lucidity. Uh, it's a memorial song for one of their own, Chemo Blom. Chemo Blom. Why do I know that name? Chemo Blom. And Marco's in it. So thank you, little Raven. Thank you. Get in the pool. Have some fun. We'll hang out for another 20 minutes here or so. Uh, then we'll boogie. So you don't want to eat fish at all. I like a good tuna melt. A good tuna melt is awesome. I like a good tuna melt with some cheese. Melt some cheese on top of that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What am I doing over here? Okay. All right. We're good to go. Okay. So, uh, and don't forget... For those of you still uh, hanging with us, how many we got here? For those of you still hanging, we are going to try to do the Saturday live reaction stream. So keep an eye out for that when you get the notification that the Saturday stream is ready to go. F go over to the Discord, follow the directions, drop the 10 spot in PayPal, get your link. That way we can get it cleared through copyright and um, be able to do the reaction for you. Um, all abouts, all abouts. I think that might be it, Gwen. I think that might be it. Um, yeah, I think that might be it. No, I, so Rich, the way I make my tuna melts, it's white trash. I'm a proud white trash cook, right? Buttered noodles are a staple in the house. I like a good white trash meal. The way I make tuna melts are with English muffins. And then I, when I mix the tuna, I mix it with Miracle Whip. And I, I think you, you said dill. I use dill pickles, Clausen dill pickles, and I cut them up. And I chop up so like a dill relish I mix in with the um, tuna. And then I put some cheese on top of that. But not... You got to, for me, I don't know about anyone else, but a tuna melt. Thank you, Gwen. I think you're right. The all abouts. I think you're at discontinued those little twats. Um, 
if you're making, I don't know what it is. I've had tuna melts with all kinds of cheese. The only one I've ever enjoyed, just the craft singles or some sprinkled, just cheddar American cheese on it. It's just, like I said, man, I'm white trash. Uh, tuna melt on Asiago and dill bread. I bet that would be good too. But I like the, uh, I like the uh, English muffin uh, with noodles and grape jelly. Holy shit! I'm, I'm not that guy. There is a there is a white trash thing that I eat that my siblings can't stand, and the only people that did it were me and my dad. It's the only people that did it, and I think I've talked about this before. Um, I would. We would take a bowl of white rice, excuse me, and put in milk and brown sugar. But it, it, it's, it wasn't like a soup. It was just enough milk to blend in the sugar with the rice. And that's how we ate our rice, a little milk and brown sugar. And it's, I still don't know why we, we I, I can't explain it. It was it was good. I haven't had it in forever. I haven't had that in forever. I haven't had that, and I haven't had uh, I haven't had liver in quite some time. Um, I enjoy I enjoy a good piece of liver. Um, it's pretty tasty. There's another dish we had as kids: cream tuna fish and egg on toast. I almost made I almost made beans on toast the other night. I was just noshing. It was early in the evening. I wasn't going to make dinner. Everybody was fend for yourself night. I was like, you know. I could do some beans on toast. I could eat the whole thing. Not a problem. Just good stuff. Yeah, almost rice pudding, Rich. Almost, yeah. Very similar. So Sisu is a brand of candy. Different flavored licorice. Okay. Um, all right. Sisu is... And what does Sisu mean again? Um, defiance? Or is that what it means? Defiance? Sisu? Or a resolute... Or something like that. I have to look it up. But I got to watch that movie. Uh, everybody's been telling me I got to see it. So that means I have to watch it. Good thing is I have it on Amazon Prime. So I'll be able to check it out. Um, but yeah, I got to get these videos done. Ish. Got to get the vid- videos. Got to get the videos done. That's the Hank Hill. Some people just. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't want. I didn't want to get in trouble here. I didn't. Didn't want to get in trouble. Uh, just defrosting pork liver to go with minced pork and bacon. Make home pate with garlic. Tasty. There was a really when I was doing the. Um, I snagged a, a container of it. We were doing that catering event, and when we got done, the the food that the food that was served was made, and it wasn't going to be reused. So anything left over was up for grabs. It's another reason I like working in catering. So there were crab cakes, there were stuffed mushrooms, there were all these cool dips, and uh, they had a really good garlic aioli. So I was like, hey, I'm going to take a container of that. Uh, you still prefer Kraft mac and cheese out of the box? Made it last night, Rich. <laughs> Made it last night uh, with some pork chops. I got some uh, breaded pork chops, done them in the air fryer. And made some mac and cheese. Still, I, I'm that guy. I don't mind. I like to buy the meals. I do cook quite often. But there are some things like the pork tenderloin, cook in the bags, and, you know, pre-made. You can go and get, you know, they have these deals at Kroger. I'm not. I saw a guy. I, I feel bad for Canada. I saw a dude in Canada buying, like, two ribeyes, and it was, like, 60 bucks. And it's like, yo, dude, I... I I'll take the nine dollar cube steaks. I I don't I don't need. I'm I'm just my brain won't let me do it, you know. It just won't let me do it. It's like, dude, why am I going to spend eighty dollars on ribeyes? You know, these big thick ribeyes that yeah, they're great looking steaks and ribeyes are awesome, but that's not eighty dollars worth, dude. Ribeye. Like I said, I'll take the ten dollar cube steaks. Throw some, pow- uh, some breading on them, some gravy, some mashed potatoes. Yeah, man, I'll I'll do something like that. But they also do these. Um, you can buy like five pork chops for five dollars, and they're already pre-breaded. 
You just chuck them in the oven for like 20 minutes and they're good to go. So I like to do those a little quick and easy things. But then there are nights where my sons want something, one of my meals, one of the meals that I, one of the many meals that I like to make that they enjoy. I do a, um, if we're feeling, if I'm feeling not generous, that's not what I, that's not what I want to say. I don't want to say it like, you know, I am, when I'm feeling like I want to treat us for dinner instead of shake and bake, instead of, you know, fend for yourself, frozen dinner stuff, I will get tenderloin, like fillets. I'll get a couple of them, but I'll cut them up. And then I marinate them with this marinade that I do. And then I saute them in a pan, sear them in a pan, and I make a white pepper gravy and rice. And I serve the tenderloin beef tips over the rice and covered in the white pepper gravy. It's a very simple meal to make. I've told the story about it coming from Longhorn. It was a Longhorn lunch special that took off and became a thing. Um, so I make it quite often because it's really good. It's, it's heavy, though. It's a heavy, when you get done with it, you're like, Like you, like you got to untie your shoes before you eat this thing. Uh, you got to untie your shoes before you eat this meal, definitely, because your feet are going to get like, especially the older I get. The older I get, it's like, all right, let me get on some sweatpants and put on my slippers before I eat this food. People are always giving me weird looks, Masha says, when you eat banana on toasted bread with mayo. I wouldn't give you a weird look. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't give you a weird look at all. Um, let's see. Movie's awesome. Made by makers of John Wicks. That tells you all you need to know. Nice. Uh, perseverance. Gut. Okay, thank you, Ridge. Sisu, thank you. Uh, my wife likes peanut butter and craft mayo sandwiches. Down here, they do grilled banana and peanut butter sandwiches. So it's... I, I was just talking with the guy that I was doing the catering job with we were just goofing off and talking about you know if you could there's a, a building around the corner from me and it sits right across the street from the east nashville police precinct and then right next to the police precinct is this huge like three four hundred unit brand new apartment complex and across the street from it trinity lane is this building if I, if I had the nerve and the, the, the wherewithal, I would get a small business loan because I got pretty good credit. I would get a small business loan and I would open a diner across the street. The diner, see, I've watched enough Gordon Ramsay and I've worked in enough restaurants to, to understand a lot of the pitfalls that befall new restaurant bars so if i were to open a diner it would only be open lunch and breakfast that's it we would be out of there by 5 p.m the place would be closed shut down by 5 p.m no dinner service breakfast and lunch that's it and the menu one page i've got eggs how do you want them you have them fried over easy scrambled I've got toast, sausage, bacon, coffee, apple juice, orange juice, milk. That's it. That's it. I don't have vegan options. I'm not ha No, 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 no. This is a greasy spoon. Get your $7 breakfast, but you got to go. Here's your eggs, your toast, your sausage, your juice. Boom, 7 bucks. Got to go. Because I know what the overhead is. I know what the operating costs are. And I know that you can serve these types of meals for a very good price point. I don't have to charge $13 because I sprinkled parsley on eggs and I have cool shit hanging from the walls. I think a lot of people are overlooking what most people want now. They want good food, good service at a good price. That's it. That's it. The days of... Yeah, and potatoes, of course. You'd have to have the hash browns. you got to have the hash browns and, and fried potatoes. And a lot of what we serve at breakfast would carry over to lunch. 
So the bacon that we're making at breakfast is going to go on the BLTs at lunch. And for lunch, we're going to have a couple of soups. You can have a grilled cheese, grilled ham and cheese. I got hot dogs and burgers. Uh, maybe uh, some chicken tenders. And fries. That's it, dude. And sodas. Sweet tea. The basics. You, you don't... I, I live in a place that is saturated with kitsch. It's saturated with kitsch. Everything, every building and every doorway you see in my area is some hip, cool thing. And what are they going to do? They're going to overcharge you for that. They're going to charge you some crazy amount of money for some basic meal that if you strip away the accoutrement, you strip it all away and put a grill and a menu, that's all people want. They want a good burger with some fries that aren't greasy, served by someone with a smile quickly. Well, how do you do that? You keep it simple. Watch Gordon Ramsay do the um, restaurant thing. What does he do when he goes in? And you've got three pages, four pages of a menu. What does he tell you? Strip it down, man. Make it. You're, you're overcomplicating this. And I live in an area where everything is overcomplicated. Burgers served on little cutting boards with little swords, and it's now thirteen dollars. It's like, no, nah, no, no, no. You don't need all that. Good bread, good burger, slice of cheese. I don't need. I don't need people taking pictures of their food. I don't want people coming in here saying, "Oh, this is the new hip." No, no, no. I want people who are looking for a good food at a good price served quickly. It's it's Mel's Diner, Concurpa's Rest. It's it's a greasy spoon. There's no pretense here. Basic tables, you know, and I would even here's what I would do. The the one thing I would have to have is a lunch counter. That would be the one thing I would have to have. I would have to have a lunch counter. At least 6 seats, at least 6 stools. At the lunch counter. Because that's just cool as shit, dude. That's just cool as shit. You serve basic sandwiches. You don't get overcomplicated. Ham and cheese, grilled ham and cheese, a club. Right? Nothing that's going to take your your cook or yourself, whoever's doing the cooking, too long. You want you want to turn your tickets quickly. And the only way to do that is keep it short and simple. Kiss, best rule. So, hey, do you have this? No. What we have is on the menu. No substitutions, no additions, none of that shit. And I will have stuff on here that will appease ever that appeal everybody. From a simple grilled cheese sandwich, well, I can't have dairy. Well, go somewhere else. So I'm I, that that's my idea. That's my genius idea. My genius idea is to open a little diner across the street from that police precinct. And the only time I'm open is during shift change from morning to afternoon. Because, again, I'm not stupid. Location, location, location. I'm, I, am, I am to this day, every time I drive past these buildings, I'm shocked. Hey, Marlo, I'm shocked every time I drive past these buildings. There's a, a recording studio, this, that. There's all these other businesses, graphic designer, insurance company. And I'm like, seriously, you have a police precinct, a preschool, a government building. You open one little diner right here. You could retire in three years. You could turn the business over to someone to run after two. It would be pure profit by Wednesday by keeping it simple. No dinner. You open at 5 a.m., 5.30, you're closed by 3. Everything's shut down and clean and put away and inventory and orders done by 5. Done. I'm telling you, it is, if, if I had it, if I, if I had it in me, Man, that's a risk, though. I would have to find someone that I trust to to figure some other parts of that out. Um, that's the thing. I would have to find someone that I trust 
because there are aspects of it, ordering and suppliers and things like that, distributors that I'm not familiar with. And you'd have to, hey, Mega Dog, and you have to you have to figure that stuff out. So, am I going to resurrect Concurpa's rest? Yes, Gwen. Um, I do plan on that. I do plan on firing it back up. It'll probably be a whole new series. It'll be a whole new um, start from the beginning and go. So yeah, it'll. It, I I do I do have that in the head ready to go. So, um, make sure I'm not missing anything. Peanut butter, bacon, and cheese on a grilled burger is now a thing. Ugh. Uh, again, you know, it, it, it's. I'm, 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 and I, my part of town is nothing. This whole city is filled with kitsch. It's just all, it's all kitsch, dude. It's all overpriced, over-decorated, overhyped. Just, it's, it's a mess, man. It really is. So every time I look around, it's like, like where I want it, where I throw darts. It's like, can, can I just have a bar, please? Can I have a bar that's not trying to be something? It's just a bar with some dart boards. That's, that's all I want. I just want a bar with a jukebox and some dart boards. But they all got this thing. They all got to be this thing. Bro. Someone in Nashville right down the street from where I live opened now now stay with me if you can a speakeasy A speakeasy. Do you know what a speakeasy is? Sorry. Do you know what a speakeasy was? <clears throat> During Prohibition, there were the little hidden rooms that served alcohol, and you had to have a, a little door window, and, hey, uh, you know, the, 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 the dove flies at dawn, you know, kind of thing, right? Why, in 2023, are you opening a speakeasy? Oh, because you try too much. Now I got to pay for that. Now I got to pay for that. Now we got to pay for that. Now we have to pay for that shit, that, that idea. You're going to charge for that because you're going to think your fucking idea is so cool that you can charge $13 for a, 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 a gin and tonic because, you know, We've got music playing from the 1930s and everything is looks gangst. It's a theme bar. It's the Hard Rock Cafe for flappers. A speakeasy. God, I hate people. Can I just have a bar, a bar that has a couple of dartboards, a pool table that's maybe, you know, got a dead rail and you got to hit it a couple times to get the last ball out? Dra- you know, for if I walk into another bar and see more than four taps, I'm going to turn around and walk out. You only need four taps. That's it. Why do you have 32 taps? We have 32 beers. On, we have pale. We have a. <laughs> And what are you doing? You're paying for that. That's right. They have to pay for that some. They got to cover that shit. Now. Now, that's just pretentious, bro. 32 taps. 32. There's a bar that's got like 50. Like, why? 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 Most people don't drink draft beer. Most people don't. Most people want their beer in a bottle. If they want their beer in a glass, they'll ask for a cold mug with their bottle. IPAs. Jeez. You know, I bet if you're drinking an IPA, 
I bet you own a pontoon boat. You're the guy that wears the visor. You work in money management, but it's really your dad's company. Your wife's way fatter than she was in college. I know who you are. No, I I, I just want a rolling rock, you know, maybe a Bob's Your Uncle Cider. Maybe a, you know, an innocent gun, All right? You know, something, something easy. Doesn't have to be complicated. Doesn't have to be complicated. Everybody overcomplicates. It's all overhyped bullshit. And I live in, in the hipster part of that. Got to go to, uh, yeah, the dive bars for the best food. Yeah. And but that's the problem. There's none of them here. There are no dive bars. There are no, like, real di- Even the VFW. I rolled into the VFW one night. It was just filled with hipsters who thought it was cool to be hanging out. Have you ever gone into a VFW that's been taken over by hipsters? Because VFWs are open to the public a lot of times, unless they're doing a private event. Veterans of foreign wars, they'll they'll do concerts and and you know, shows and shit and turkey shoots and all this stuff. Have you ever gone into a VFW and looked around the room at some of these old guys and what they're feeling when there's a bunch of people with sleeve tattoos and scarves, big gauge earrings, right? Bro, it's it's hilarious. It's absolutely hilarious. That's where I live. I live in a part of town where people in their 20s thinks it's smart to pay $2,400 a month to live in this part of town. <laughs> That's where I live. So everything is priced accordingly. All these little shops, man, all these little, you know, there's a tobacco shop down the street. I'm not going to go in there and buy my smokes. I'll go down to Kroger (laughs) where they have them at regular price. But I got to pay for your little signs and your little ideas and your themes and all this other crap. Nope, we uh, we don't have dive bars here. We have bars, bro. You know how it pisses people off when someone tells you that they themselves are cool? And you're like, you don't get to do that. Like, you don't get to say that. That's other people say you're cool. You don't get to say you're cool. Same thing with a dive bar. You can't tell me it's a dive bar. You you can't do that. You can't promote it that way. You can't promote a dive bar. That's the You see see why it's frustrating? Do you see why do you see why I bang my face into walls sometimes? Do you see why East Nashville's newest dive bar? What do you mean, bro? Dive bars don't advertise. Nobody knows where they are. They're dive bars. They're gross. You use the bathroom with your feet. Right? You kick in the stall door, pee, flush the toilet. Right. (laughs) Everything is you. You use your feet for everything in one of those bathrooms. Yeah. It's the dive bar. It's the dive bar. They're smoking in the bar. That's how you know it's a dive bar. If I can't smoke in your bar, it's not a dive bar. I need at least three women over the age of 50. Dressed like they're in their 20s. Sitting at the bar. That's what I need because the lighting makes them look in their 30s, but they're not. That's all spanks and filler over there, young men. Yeah, she puts out, but you're eventually going to have to look at that. So I need the old man at the bar who you never see leave the end of the bar. That's a dive bar, But, but they don't exist here. Because Nashville is too, hey, hey, everybody, check us out. We're Nashville. Uh, So that's a no to the can-cans or burlesque. Actually, actually, Barton, Nashville has burlesque shows. There's many of them around. We we had them on our radio show talking about it. Um, There are burlesque shows in Nashville every weekend. Yep, it's taking, it's... Every, like I said, everything is kitsch. 
everything is kitsch. There's there's just no more diner. There's no more bar, right? There's no more thrift shop. Everything is a boutique. You know, the throwback boutique. It's like, look, bitch, just because you don't want it anymore doesn't make it antique. Okay? That that's ridiculous. There's a there's a there's a indoor flea market down the street. That's they call it East Side Indoor Antiques. It's an indoor flea market. There's booths. It's an ind- you. It's an indoor flea market. So I'm in the indoor flea market looking for chairs because I'm still trying to get this. So I'm looking around. Just this is a chair. I got this chair for sixty dollars at a consignment shop. A similar chair at this East Side antique whatever. Like three hundred dollars. Just an album. It was what album was it? I think it was a, a Led Zeppelin record. Might have been going like Led Zeppelin three. Right? I wanted like forty dollars for it. It's like, dude, I'm not paying forty dollars for Led Zeppelin three. I would have I would have I would have bitched for fourteen dollars to pay for Led Zeppelin three when it came out. What it's probably their least that's probably their lowest rank album for me. But because they put antique and hey, this is all retro and you know, these cool ashtrays and speaking of ashtrays, so I've got this ashtray that's like a golf ball thing i'm like you know i could probably get 50 dollars for this in one of these stupid places but no east nashville is now the place where people spend outrageous sums of money to complain about how much money they're spending to live we got lucky we got lucky with our property long before the bubble started to even inflate so and we bought it from my wife's grandmother so we got a very good deal on this property. Very good deal. If I if I told people around here who lived around here who were buying condos and houses around me, if I told them what we paid for it, they would hate me. They would run me out of town so they could get this property if I told them how much we paid. It was, it was so good that my brother, I was talking to my brother about it, like, hey, man, what do we do? How do we do this kind of a thing? Is this a good deal? My brother said, if you don't buy that house, I'm going to be your landlord. So you may want to buy that house. He's like, I'll, I'll come in and I'll swoop in and, and buy that thing up. I'm like, all right. So I guess that means we have to uh, we have to do that. Starbucks are even in some churches now. Rich, thank you for bringing that up. My diner would only carry Barris Brothers coffee. My diner would only, co- would only carry Packer Perk and Cinnamon Grog. Those would be the only two coffees you could get at my diner that that's what that's what i would serve um i i still i'm still convinced that all these people posting uniform uh not uniform posting videos about how much food is costing and how much things are costing and how they hate it i think it's all marketing from competitors i think i think people are paying youtubers and tiktokers to do viral videos about how much a subway costs when they're getting a hundred bucks per video from firehouse subs. So I, I, I am thoroughly convinced that every corporation in this country is now price gouging. I think every com- I think every company and corporation is, is charging whatever they want to charge for tires, gas, cigarettes, whatever, because we keep buying it. We keep buying it. You know, like I said in that video, $80 for these ribeyes. Why, why are you buying them? How are, no. As long as you keep buying them, they're just going to keep cranking these things up. A bag of ruffles, $8. Four years ago, that was $3. We all know it. We all, everywhere, everywhere around the world is experiencing the same thing. Prices are going up. Wages are not. And the people who are in charge are, are, are treating you like this isn't happening or it's fine. It's not. 
The only way to stop inflation is to stop buying things. It hurts. It really does. But Mega made a great point. It's cheaper to party at home. And you can fall over and no one's going to know. But that's the only way. But we're so addicted to our name brands and our certain things that we have to have that we refuse to sacrifice. Well, the only way it's going to change, supply and demand. Stop demanding it and the supply will back up. And they'll, Okay, you have to start treating everything like Easter candy. You have to start treating everything like Easter candy. Why are you buying Easter candy? Just wait till the day after. Just wait till the day after. It's all going to go half price. So what difference does a day make? It doesn't. That should anger you. Easter candy should really make you mad. That the week leading up to Easter, this chocolate bunny is $4. But if I come back not 24 hours after Easter, that chocolate bunny is now a dollar. Why? There's no difference in the bunny. It's the same chocolate bunny. It, it doesn't, there's no like self combust thing there. So when it turns midnight on Easter, the bunny explodes. Put down the bunny. You're not even noticing it. It's, it's not, re- that's the thing. It's, it, it's, it happens so much. You don't even realize that you're being fucked. And they're doing it right in front of you. Was $4 yesterday. But because it's no longer Easter demand, we got to drop the price. Because it's not in demand anymore. There you go, folks. Stop buying it. Stop paying for it. And that shit will back up. And their supply will back up. And they will have to drop the price. We only have two votes. Remote, wallet. That's it. Stop watching. Stop streaming. Stop subscribing. Not to me. Always subscribe to me. Start buying cheaper brands. Start learning how to cook better. But as long as we keep... Feeding the beast. The beast is going to, oh, let, let's see if I can get another dollar. Look, are they money grubbing? Yes, of course they are. That's all they care about. The bottom line, we got to have this quarter's got to be bigger than last quarter. This this year's got to be better than last year. Well, how do we get more profits? We're either going to fire people or we're going to charge more money. That's the only way to do it. How do we make more money as a business? This is why the men get paid more than women never panned out for the argument. Because it'd be like, okay, dude, then every company would be nothing but women. If you're telling me that I could legally pay women less than men, I would never hire a man. See how that goes? So as long as they as long as we keep feeding them, they're gonna keep jacking it up. Two weeks ago in Kauai, premium gas was seven bucks. Pack of Marlboro was twenty. Fuck that. Fuck that. That's like living up in Barrow, Alaska. But at least the guys working the rigs up in Barrow were getting paid, you know, to to cover that. But again, dude, it is. It's getting to the point where you've got to start taking action. And the only way to take action the only way to take action is to understand the sacrifice and say, what do I need and what do I want? You need gas for your car. You need electricity for your house. Everything else is a want. So that's the thing that, that at least here in the United States, because the United States overall is a culture of consumption star fuckers. So the, the brains of the American population is so twisted that they don't even understand the the Easter candy analogy. Like, they can't wrap their head around it. It's it's the similar argument I made about Ticketmaster. Elton John in the 1980s at his peak was a $40 ticket. Elton John in his 60s 
with no new music is $1,000. Why? Why is it $1,000? Because the company knows Americans will pay that shit. Elton John, when am I going to see him again? Who gives a fuck, dude? It's $1,000. What's more important to you when the Eagles did their Hell Freezes Over tour? I'm not paying $400 for that. You haven't gotten better, right? You're still the Eagles. <laughs> How are you more valuable now? Inflation. Okay. Cars haven't gotten better. Nothing's gotten better, folks. Except dividends in people's portfolios. Because you keep buying it. Have you seen the videos? um, Have you seen the videos of the car lots and the car dealerships? Where they go around and ask the people that work there what their monthly payment is? And these people say... The most ridiculous shit. Oh, I've got a 2021 Grand Cherokee, and I'm only paying $13.50 a month. What? You, I, don't, I don't trust anybody who pays over $1,000 a month to drive a fucking car. You're an idiot. You're a lunatic. That's ridiculous, bro. I'll go get a nice Honda Accord for five grand, and I will drive that thing for free for 20 years if I want to. Because I don't need a 2021 Grand Cherokee. I want Bluetooth. I want blah, 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 blah. But you give in to that want. Every single person in that car lot is is underwater in their own car. How do you trust anyone in that car lot? If I owned a car lot, every one of my every one of my salesmen and workers better be like, "I own my car. I have no payments." Because I'm smart. 20 years ago, 30 years ago, car payments and leasing, that was that wasn't a big deal. But in today's economy, car payments Dude, no way. Car payments. And then you amateurize the loan and realize that that $30,000 car you bought is actually going to cost you fifty, dollars And it's only going to be worth ten dollars when you're done? No, man. No, 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 no. But it keep, they keep feeding it. Remember during the vid when used cars were selling faster than new cars? And then all of a sudden, they went back to buying new cars. I'm like, dude, that should have ended it. It should have clicked. A collective consciousness. It should have clicked with everybody going, why do we need used, Why do we need new cars? The way they build them now. Some people just. You can get a four or five-year-old car. It'll last you 10, 15 years if you change the oil, tires, you know, maintenance the vehicle. No, man. That's. You don't need Dave Ramsey. You don't need any of that shit. It should be beating you in the face with a fucking bat wrapped in barbed wire of how fucked you are. Stop it. You can stop a lot of it. Not not some of it, some, like taxes and property taxes and things like that, price of gas, all that stuff. But if you start, if we start collectively being a little more frugal, they'll change. They'll have to. Sorry. Um, I remember going to see two bands for a three and a half hour show at, yeah, 1979, The Jam. Rodri, I've got a ticket stub for Guns N' Roses and Motley Crue that was uh, 1995 general admission. Motley Crue and Guns N' Roses on the Girls, Girls, Girls Tour. Uh, September or November of 87. 20 bucks. 20 bucks. So, yeah. It's, it's, again, you keep buying them, you keep going to the shows, you keep going to the games, you keep buying the products, they're going to keep raising the prices until we make a stand. 
Longhorn Steakhouse and Olive Garden just reported last quarter that more people who earn over $150,000 a year dined at their restaurants than any other time in their histories. So people who are now making over $150,000 a year are no longer going to Ruth's Chris. They're no longer going to Bob's Steak and Chop House and getting the Wagyu. Now they're going to Outback. Now they're going to Olive Garden. So what does that tell the people at Longhorn and Olive Garden? Well, let's raise the prices. Because people that make more money can now come and eat here. Well, that prices out a whole other group of people that used to go there. Stop going. Go to the grocery store, buy you something you can eat, cook it, and eat it. Because Longhorn is a want. It's not a need. It's a want. You need food. You want a certain thing. So, still driving a 23-year-old Nissan. Good for you, Rodri. Good for you. Good shout. 70 bucks a ticket for a Prem game? <laughs> when I saw that match in 92, when I went to that match in 92, the transportation, the um, the train back and forth and some snacks were more expensive than the ticket that I had to pay. So the guy had the ticket, and I gave him the money for the ticket. I think it was maybe 20 bucks, 25 maybe, back in 92, if that. Um, maybe he overcharged. I don't know, but it wasn't that much. But I paid way more in, like, food and beverages, and, you know, I think I got a scarf. Um, and riding trains and shit. Now, that's, again, here's what you have to remember moving forward, kids. The quality slash quantity has not inflated. Always remember that. Some things have deflated. Hey, Marcus, I posted a picture on Instagram about Pop-Tarts. And how Pop-Tarts are now smaller. Tasty Cakes are smaller. Debbie Cakes are smaller. There's fewer slices of bread in a loaf of bread now. Yet the bread costs more. So, this is where you have to start saying, is it cheaper for me to make my own bread? Is it cheaper for me to get bread that maybe I wouldn't have bought two, three years ago? Because there are different, right? Just simple things. You don't need these, you know, I, I saw this guy be in front of me with all this high-end food in his, in his cart. And it's like, yo, man, you can be healthy without that. And I, I understand where that's coming from, this, this organic, natural, nothing's organic. Everything's treated. Because it's packaged in styrofoam and wrapped in plastic. So slow your roll. Start using your head. Generation X, look at us. Put any Generation X person next to a, a Gen Z person. Who looks older? I'm going to be 55 next month. There are people that my son goes to college with that look my age. Yet, we grew up eating garbage, but it was better garbage. See where I'm going with this? Over the years, they've made the garbage worse and more expensive, and we keep paying for it. So, my kids got good skin. Because they eat real foods. They eat salads. They eat, uh, I brought home a big bag of celery and, and cucumbers just to sit around and nosh on. I encourage that stuff. I encourage fruits and vegetables. I make vegetables every meal. Is it organic farm-raised picked by, you know, Madonna's vagina vegetables? No. It's a can of corn that costs a dollar. But it feeds four people. And it's corn, so it's fine. It doesn't have to be ho, ho, ho. It doesn't have to be any of that shit. I will get a giant packet of Salisbury steaks. The um, the Knorr, K-N-O-R-R, -R, the Knorr family pack of Salisbury steaks. 
six bucks. And there's eight of them in there. And a bag of instant mashed potatoes for 99 cents. That's a good meal. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good meal, dude. A couple pieces of butter bread. You're fine. You'll survive. It's food. It's nutrients. You'll be fine. Well, it's not organic. It has this. It's got that. It's got, it's got what? It's got food. You're lucky you're not eating an MRE. Settle down. Maybe we're just better preserved. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe Gen X is just well preserved from all the preservatives that we have completely engorged on over the past few years. But no, I think we have a natural immunity. I think we have a herd immunity. I think Gen X is a little bit... Um, we see those things like growing your own vegetables. That we, we see things like that as bonuses, right? We don't expect everything to be that way. We see it as, look, man, you're going to get food from the grocery store. It's food. It's food. It passed the USDA stuff, so it's fine. It doesn't have to be. Salt and pepper are amazing spices, dude. They do amazing things. The farmers eating their own meat and potatoes every day live to be 100 plus. Thank you, Marlo. Thank you. My great-grandmother lived to be 104. Ate out of her front yard. You'd go over her house for lunch, and she would bring in this bowl of shit that she picked out of her front yard. It's grass and weeds and shit. It's called poke salad. That was that. All the vegetables were there, all the... She had celery and she grew lettuce and she grew cucumbers and squash and all that stuff. And when I hear the excuse that, well, my city won't let that, like here in Nashville, there are certain um, things you're not allowed to grow on your properties and stuff like that. Okay, well then change the people. Change the people running your community. Those people are, care more about corporations than they do about people. So you need to vote them out. If your government won't let you grow your own food, no matter how much property you do or do not have, you need to get rid of that government. If your local municipal government will not allow you to grow food, get rid of them. Make a campaign about it. Make sure they understand the reason you want them out. Because you won't let me survive. You won't let me feed myself. You're forcing me to rely on others for my food. That's not right. We are a self-sustaining people. We should be allowed to grow our own food. As long as we are not encroaching on others' properties, using illegal means to do it, why can't I grow corn in my backyard? Why can't I grow whatever I want in my backyard? Well, you got to put them in these and you got to do that. No, 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 no. I should be able to till my land and farm my land. Even if it's a half an acre, I should be allowed to do that. But if your government will not allow you to grow vegetables, they got to go. You got to go, my man. Um... Asking your friend if he had gluten, didn't have gluten, they left. Oh, they don't do, because they don't, asking if his food had gluten in it, because they don't do gluten, they left. Well, if you, if you have a gluten allergy, yeah, then don't eat somewhere where they have, serve food with gluten. But here's the thing about gluten allergies and peanut allergies and any other food allergy. Why do I have to cater to you? Why do I have to cater to the, to the 2% of people that have those allergies? You can go down the street, find another place. There's something that a lot of people forget. We reserve the right to refuse service to anyone for any reason. I don't have to cater to this very small group of niche group of people. <coughs> well, does your food have gluten? My food's got all kinds of shit in it. Mostly flavor. It probably does have gluten. It's got whey. It's got dairy. It's, these people are asking all those questions at the, oh, my God. They're all bankers 
at this event we did. They're all bankers. And it was stuffed mushrooms, crab cakes, some dips, some crudite, um, some naan and dip, and all kinds of stuff. Just finger foods. Jeez, man, if, if I had a dollar for every... Do these have dairy? Do these have pork? Do these have gluten? Do these have peanut? Do these have blah, blah, blah? They asked me about every taboo ingredient that you could possibly think of. And I hated my responses because it was, yeah, it's probably, it's got pork in there. Those are pork sausage stuffed mushrooms. The, the little sign, the little, little card that we put on both sides of the chafing dish, the chafing pan it says pork sausage stuffed mushrooms. So when you ask me, do these have pork I'm going to try not to treat you like a fucking idiot but I got to treat you like an idiot Gwen thank you very much for stopping by have a great rest of the day I had a salad with mozzarella bacon bell pepper eggs oh nice that's like a um it's like a cob it's like a cob salad you had there good for you I like a good chef salad I like a good chef salad uh Vietnamese restaurant yeah they got a lot of peanuts there there's a China walk down the street for me. I've got to hit up. It's been so long since I've had good Chinese food. Um, already have herbs and also loads of mint for tea. I have, um, on the side of the house, I have some mint growing. Not organized growing. It's wild mint. And when I go by with the weed eater, kicks up a nice, kicks up a nice minty smell. But no, the guy across the street, he's got a garden a vegetable garden, but it's it had to be, what did he tell me? Everything had to be in their own um, plant planter. Like everything, because we live in a metro, everything had to be in a planter. So all of his tomatoes were in one planter box. All of his cucumbers are in another planter box. And he couldn't till the land. So everything had to be... Um, compartmentalized so anything he wanted to grow basically was hydroponic and i'm like so you just can't come in here with a tiller and a plow and a cedar and row some hose and he's like no they won't let you do it so he had to make all of these little plank planters and that's just that became and they just make it they make it to the point where it's like you just don't do it and that's what they're doing so, and our property tax is going up. Our property tax is going up next year. Our uh, freaky Freddy, whatever his name is, McConnell, the mayor here in Nashville, got elected, got hipster elected. You know, he's a young up and coming, da 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 da. And then you find out that he's just basically a socialist. You find out that the guy's like a hard left leaning cat, and you're like, oh, seriously, dude? Come on. But he, he, he smooth jazzed everybody. Um, is the, you know, we need some fresh blood. We need some young. We need to get rid of the old boy, the old guard. You know, and he's a man of color and, you know, all this shit. And it's, he used all the buzzwords to get elected. And then he gets into office and everybody's like, you're not doing shit. Like our downtown, the, the, the scary thing about our downtown is a reality that people don't talk about. Our downtown is dangerous. It's dangerous after midnight. It is. For them to even pretend that it's not is gaslighting at its finest. They are short on cops. They're short on security. They have no parking. They have no security anywhere. It's, it's a free-for-all down there. It's dangerous. And as it gets later in the evening, it gets more dangerous. And they're not doing anything to address it. When you go to Ybor City in Tampa, there's a cop every 20 feet. And they're doing their jobs. They're pulling out the instigators. They're getting rid of the people causing trouble. They're doing their job. They're active. That's what I loved about Ybor City. Is that they, you walk outside of the club, you walk outside of Masquerade, there's 12 cops all within your vision. All doing different stuff. But uh, I miss the Stroop Waffles. No, they're down there. Um, yeah, they're down there. But yeah, that's the uh, 
they're caring more. It's I don't know if your cities are doing it, but in in the United States, a lot of cities are going through um, residential growths. People are are emigrating and leaving so many other places and and bringing their shit here. It's frustrating when people from California and and these other states that aren't being run well come here and then they're like, oh, this is great. No state tax, great weather, great people. Let's fuck it up. And that's what they're doing. So a lot of people who have been here for a long time, myself included, are uh, starting to look for ways out. Uh, I'm looking outside of Nashville. I'm looking out. I missed a letter. Oh, oh, a letter in the name. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I, I'm looking at outside of Nashville, like 20, 30 miles outside of Nashville. Like I can do all this from home. I can work from home. So I don't need to be in Nashville. And a lot of longtime people are like, you know, I could live up in Greenbrier. That's about, uh, 30 minutes outside of town and it's Greenbrier. It's yeah. You can, you can pee in your backyard and won't have to worry about seeing a neighbor. That's what it. That's what people are looking to do because it's just getting crowded. It's to live here. It's just getting crowded. It's expensive. The roads are atrocious. That the the there's potholes everywhere. I know that people up north, like Rich up north, Rich deals with them as well. Up in uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, up in that area, the roads are really bad. And for some reason, they're really bad here. And and there was a story that came out, I think about a month ago about how our lovely new city leaders dropped the ball with the new contracts and the paving. So the paving was done with inferior materials and stuff like that. So all the paving that has been done recently is now starting to come back up. There are sections of the road where just the traffic is at a standstill because cars are having to serpentine around these gigantic potholes in the streets. And these aren't potholes in side streets either. These are on interstates, main thoroughfares, four-lane highways, things like that. You know, there's an Ellington Parkway is near me, and we drive up that way to school. And there have been times where you look over and you can see bumper-to-bumper traffic. Why? Because all these cars are trying to get through these potholes. And yet, they care more about, you know, making sure that schools teach pronouns to people instead of actually, you know, fixing the city and, all that other stuff. Pothole Central, dude. It is here. On top of that, we got shitty traffic. So uh, we can now never grow your own weed at home. No, you can't, which I think you should. I think you should be able to. Uh, just get out of America altogether. Where am I going to go? If I were to go anywhere, honestly, if I were going to be an expat, it would be in the Caribbean. I would, I would move down to, like, Puerto Rico. Uh, Trinidad, Tobago, Panama, somewhere like that, Central America, the Caribbean. I think I'd, I'd be fine there. But everywhere, everywhere has its... I think anywhere you, you move to after a certain period of time will just become another place. I really think that. I really think that no matter where you live, eventually it'll become a place. I don't believe the grass is always greener over the septic tank. I I believe that the grass is greener under your own feet. You make the grass greener. So it, to me, it's never been about, well, if you move over here, it's going to be better. That's fine. I can move to Finland, but you know what? I bet I find I'm going to find some problems there. If I move to Sweden, I'm going to find problems. Netherlands, everywhere you go, there's going to be an issue. There's going to be something that is not appealing about it. It's not the United States. It's it's certain areas of it. And I also believe, I don't want to get into it, but I also believe, I don't know if it is where y'all are, and I think Rich can back me up on this. I, I feel, I, I see it a little, but I think it's more of a feeling that I have. Um, the pendulum is swinging back. Hopefully it doesn't overcorrect and everybody starts dressing like fucking Amish. But I, I think that the the pendulum is swinging away from the madness. I think the pendulum is swinging away from the experiment. The, hey, let's push it and see what we can do. I think it's swinging away from that. I think enough people are seeing we, we need very basic things here, folks. You guys are doing too much. 
and the call for that to swing back, I think, is happening. I think the pendulum is swinging. I see it in music. So a lot of the a lot of the music that's becoming more and more popular. What is that music? It's throwback music. It's it's going back to the formula of straight rock and roll. You look at bands like The Warning and Love Bites and Porcupine Tree and all these other bands, Nightwish, just do rock and roll. The the new Slash song with Brian Johnson, that's that's part of that pendulum swinging back. The hey man, we just want good music. We don't need all this other stuff. We don't need to be pushed things. So, like I said, I just have this feeling that it's a little, it's moving a little bit back. So, anyway, uh, it is once went to a party with 10,000 people with the same surname. Oh, okay. Anywhere is better. Nah. No, it's not. It's not. We just got bad publicity. And we have a shit media and shit government right now. But no, it's not. Any, not anywhere is better. I wouldn't move to Canada. I wouldn't move to Mexico. I wouldn't move to England. So I I, I, I would not leave the greatest country on the planet. It's not going to happen. But like I said, if I, if I could find a nice joint down in, in the Caribbean, that's, that's pretty sweet too. So it's, it's a battle I would face. But no, not anywhere is better. Um, pendulum is swinging back. Yeah, people are sick of the bullshit and all facets of society. It, they, it is. It's, I think people are just... I think people are at the, all right, dude, enough. <laughs> They're just, okay, enough, man, enough of this craziness. Let's, let's get away from this craziness. We need to get away from it. We're not healthy. We're not healthy people uh, mentally. Uh, people are frustrated, and we all know what the source is. We all know what the problem is. We all know it's the media. It's social media. It's the media. It's your government. Our governments are being led by social media. They're taking all their cues from social media, either the addiction to social media or the audience on social media, which is why everything appeals to such a small group of people. All of these things that are being done is only for a very small, active group of people. And where is this messaging coming from? Social media. And the media feeds off social media because social media is the big thing, right? That's the thing. So the real problem is social media. Because social media levels things through optics. They make you think that this over here is just as popular as that when it's not. It's just a small group of vocal people. Whereas this over here, maybe, you know, many people just don't give a shit enough to comment. But because they say, oh my God, look at this. Look at all these likes and shares. That must be something. It's like, no, it's not. And I think people are starting to figure that out. We had that issue in radio when social media first started. Look at these texts. Look at these chats. Bro, that means nothing. That's just people on the internet. Don't listen to them. Why? Because they have enough time to sit here on the internet and do this. Who cares? It's a very small group of people. But their, their, their impressions, again, look at everything. Everything is affected by it. Look at the college athletes now. College athletes now get NIL, name, image, likeness. All that comes from social media. All that comes from social media push because these athletes were able to get on there and get enough people to support them to go see, look. Whereas before it was, you're getting an education, fucko. Yeah, we'll use your name, image, and likeness until we're done giving you a free education, room and board and food, and giving you access to the NFL, giving you access to agents and all this other shit, the benefits you receive as a scholarship player on this SEC football team are going to open doors for you to make money in the future. You don't need that money now. Plus, you're in your 20s, you'll do stupid shit. All of that changed with social media. All of it changed. Because now a player can say, well, look how many followers I have. I can put your business in front of those followers. Even though 40% of them are robots, doesn't matter. Look how many impressions I get. I do not talk about analytics. I don't do it. Because you will analyze and paralyze. Paralysis through analysis. Can't have it. Can't have it. So it's cool that they have analytics for me to look at if I want to see blah, blah, blah. Don't care. I'm not going to let it drive me. I'm not going to let math and numbers drive me. It's not going to happen. The chat 
is what I'm going for. I'm going for this. This is it. Rich, have a great rest of the day. Give the little ones a hug. Um, it's not a paradise anywhere. You have to try and live the way that suits you the best and don't compare what you have or others do. That's right. You know, so it that's human nature. You can call it countries. You can call it nations. You can call it kingdoms. You can call them commonwealths or whatever. But that's what it is. It's like-minded people gathering together and seeking safety, comfort, and security. Society. And within there is a shared culture and a shared, shared moral compass. But anyway, I want to say thank you to everybody for taking time out of your day. We're going to jump because I've got stuff i got to do as well. Um, again, pop-up, live stream. Thank you, Little Raven. She's not here. <coughs> but thank you, Little Raven, for the box of goodies. I've got my licorice, got my cookies, got all the stuff I need to make me a very happy boy. If you would like to send me treats or anything from your area, the P.O. box is listed down below. If you are going to send me something through the mail, please just give me a heads up so I can keep an eye on the P.O. box. So thank you to everybody for your contributions, including my bandmade CD. Again, if you want some stuff to go up, uh, hey, Dini Garcia, if you want some stuff to go on the shelves of honor, Send it to the P.O. Box, and I'll put it up on the shelves of honor with all the other concurpiness that is hanging out on my shelves. Thank you to Rich, Ridge, Chris, everybody, my mods, for keeping all the knuckleheads in line with you guys. I don't, I don't really have to do I feel like Donald Trump when I do this. You guys are great. You don't have to do any of that. You guys are awesome. You don't really need to be led around by a leash, so that's a good thing. You guys are a bunch of adults, and I appreciate that. Thank you, Eric, Rodri, Sip, M. Park. Uh, I want to get up the list here. Um, Sophie, thank you very much. You dropped in a little late. That's cool. Um, Marcus, Masha, Yanni, everybody, thank you for stopping by today and hanging out with us on the east side of Music City, USA. Hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed. You're following on any and all the social media. Super Chat is active, including other ways to help contribute to the show from Patreon to PayPal. Thank you to Aunt Betty's Nut Butter. Thank you to Connect 200 and Music to See. Thank you to all of you for taking time out of your day to hang out with us here in Nashville. Make sure you're looking out for each other. Make sure you're looking out for your neighbor. Try to do at least one good thing a day. I am Eric Clark. You are the best darn subscribers in the world. And this has been...